I wanted to talk about question number 37 here. It's a nice opportunity to go over Lewis dot diagrams and shapes of molecules and a couple of little extra twists on it. So here's question number 37 on exam three. Which of the following Lewis dot diagrams represents the molecule that contains the smallest bond angle? So we're looking for a small bond angle. And we've got four choices here. And they're Lewis dot diagrams that are nice and complete. They include all the electrons. We don't have to fill anything in. So I'm going to use this as an opportunity to go over how to find the shape from a Lewis dot diagram. Uh, let me go here because I've copied the problem. And here you can see the, the choices I have. And the way in which we find the shapes and bond angles for molecules using the valence shell electron pair repulsion model is to look at the central atom. We'll start with this one, the carbon tetrafluoride molecule. We look at the center of this atom, and here we are, carbon with four sigma bonds. Now, when we find the shape of a molecule, we use a Lewis dot diagram, and we count the number of sigma bonds uh, that are around the atom that we're looking for the geometry of. And it's one that you really should know. It gives all the possible angles for anything that we would be covering in AP chemistry, especially these first three rows. These last two, not so much. There have been a lot of questions on them. But these right here, these are the ones that you want to deal with. We had four sigma bonds. Those are called four domains. And we see four electron domains. And we have some choices, one, two, three choices, when you have four possible clouds of electrons, either shared or unshared. The one that fits us here is the one that has four shared pairs of electrons, four bonding pairs. That's a tetrahedral molecule. Whenever you have four shares of electrons, the ideal angle is 109. And I'll just write in 109 degrees. Best way to organize four clouds of electrons. Let's go back now to our B and we'll do the same thing. We'll draw our circle around here and see one, two, three sigma bonds. And this cloud of electrons is, it's there. I mean, there are two electrons here which are repulsive and they're gonna be involved in the shape of the molecule. So we're still dealing with four pairs of electrons. And we go back to our shape table, four domains, and this is where we get trigonal pyramidal. Now notice the tetrahedral was in red italics, that's symmetrical. The unsymmetrical ones are here. This is, you now we've got sort of like almost a pyramid, hence trigonal pyramidal, where we have three bonding pairs, three things attached, and then one cloud of electrons. Ideally, it's 109 degrees. This is unsymmetrical and would produce a polar molecule, a molecule with a dipole, some greater intermolecular attractions. Let's go back to our drawing. And here we've got 109 degrees again. The second time we've got 109, 109 degrees. And now let's see these other choices that we have. Again, a circle. And, and this circle, we see we've got something new. We've got a double bond. Now, remember, when I said when we count bonds, we count sigma bonds. We have one, two, three sigma bonds, and our second bond in here is a pi. That means we only have three pairs of electrons, three bonded pairs. The reason that this pi isn't included is that a couple of reasons. One is that it's above and below the atom. It's a cloud above and below, if you remember our little fancy diagrams of p orbitals, that's what we have. But also, this double bond resonates through all three positions here. So um, the Lewis dot diagram is a little misleading, indicating that we've got a double bond just here. Really, the double bond exists in all three locations partially. And we're going to have the same bond lengths. And also, when we look at our shapes, I mean, three electron domains, because we don't count pi bonds. And in this case, we've got all three bonded, and we have what's called a trigonal planar, italics, bull face. This is a symmetrical molecule. And we've got 120 degrees. Going to our drawing, again, this Lewis dot diagram is pretty misleading because, first of all, the angles are wrong. You can't trust Lewis dot diagrams for angles. This is 120 degrees. And they're all the same, it's symmetrical. This Lewis dot diagram doesn't look like that at all. Let's go now to our third choice. Again, don't count the pi bond. One, two, three pairs of electrons. And you know, when we have three pairs of electrons, you remember that was 120 degrees. 120 degrees. I'll go back to the shape table just so that we have a nice look at it. And three pairs of electrons, three domains, two bonded, one lone pair. 
and we'd expect ideally 120 degrees. Back to our drawing, this bond would resonate back and forth, so we'd have the same type of bond angle, and this cloud of electrons would push this down to 120 degrees, not the 180 that are shown here. But back to our question, our question asks which one of these had the smallest bond angles, and we've got two choices. And this is where we get to a little twist that is the extra stretch that you'll find in AP chemistry. This is the summary. Here's the domains that we were talking about before. Tetrahedral, trigonal pyramidal, trigonal planar, nonlinear bent, 100, 209, 120. But what's not explained on the shape table is that clouds of electrons take up extra space. You wouldn't think that, you'd think the atoms would take up more space, but actually these clouds of electrons are not bonded to a nucleus. The protons aren't raining them in. They're free to roam about. So they take up extra space. So that's the bottom line. Pairs of electrons distort our ide ideality and they take up some extra space. Now here's the example of hydrogen atoms. Ideally, 109 when you have them all around here. But when you've got this distortion of the cloud of electrons, these guys are squeezed down to 107. Now these atoms are going to be repelled, repelled more by this cloud of electrons than they are by one another. In fact, that even works with water where we get down to 104 degrees because these clouds of electrons. And that's where we end up getting our answer for this. The answer is because of this cloud of electrons. We've got ourselves a cloud of electrons that are repelling things and pushing things down and that produces our smaller angle. The fast way of answering this question, which was, which of these loose dot diagrams represents a molecule that contains the smallest bond angle? Well, immediately, you know, you'd see this, I would say, okay, we got three things around this 120, three th things around this 120. And you see these two 109s and these, ah, cloud of electrons, cloud of electrons, submit the answer. And let's see if it's right. I sure hope so after this long explanation. Ta-da. And again, if you are on a multiple choice question where you've got only a minute and 30 seconds, a real quick look through, you'd say, okay, three pairs, 120. Three pairs, three sigma bonds, 120. Then you use these two 109s and remember the cloud of electrons. And you'd answer this within a matter of less than 30 seconds. You have more time for other questions. So there's the explanation. This is how to do shapes of molecules.